temperature checks and think it's good on instead of Rudolph? Yeah, I, I do electronic, uh, so it's, it's okay. fine. Often we don't say thanks enough. We, we, we like to say thanks for the big things and when we get uh, saved and pulled out of a pickle, but for the little things, we don't say thanks enough. You know, opening our eyes, thank you. Being able to see this day, thank you. Thank you for getting me back to my home church, even though I was in my hometown, but Thank you for bringing me safely. Y'all know my biggest fear when I'm driving is, uh, especially if I have to travel by myself, is is um, falling asleep at the wheel, even though it be in the daytime. That it, sometimes you get a little bored when you're riding by yourself, and you yeah. try all the singing and telling jokes and opening the windows and everything, but. Um, sometimes all that just really don't work, and I'm more concerned about the safety of others when I'm driving in myself because it seems that folks that fall asleep at the wheel always walk away from the crash, a lot of them, and somebody else don't. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> uh, when I was leaving last Monday, uh, Cleveland, was, their annual air show was going on, and I absolutely love the flight team, the Blue Angels. I don't know if anybody's ever watched the Blue Angels uh, 
uh, airplanes uh, fly around. Yep. Spectacular show. And in Cleveland, it's always a great, great show, and I, I love it. And so my daughter, um, the night before, she was like, Daddy, are you going to stay and watch the air show tomorrow? And I was like, no. Well, what time is it? And she says, uh, we're leaving early in the morning. But my experience with knowing that the time that the planes that I wanted to see don't fly into the afternoon, I'm like, well, I'd, I'd like to leave in the morning so that by the time old father sleep tries to hit me, I'll be just about at home. She's like, oh, no, no, they'll be done by then, and you can just drive home. And I'm like, eh, I don't know, so let me check in. The, we'll check the schedules. And sure enough, they weren't flying later on in the afternoon. And uh, says, uh, she said, well, you know, it won't be too bad. You can, you know, watch the show, and then you can drive home. I says, what you don't understand is I know myself. And I know typically between 1 o'clock and, and 2 or 3 o'clock is when I get sleepy. And... I don't want to fall asleep and somebody else's family suffers for that. Right, so I'd rather be more cognizant. If I, you know, if you know your limits, right. then don't let somebody talk you out of your limits right, right. for their convenience. I, I'd love to be there with you, but knowing what I know about myself, I'm going to make that trip so that I can get home safely. And that's what I did. And lo and behold, just as I was getting uh getting ready to get off the uh bypass of um, the uh, interstate up there at new Stanton. i started to feel it i said well just let me make it on home and i made it home okay but I, I i just don't like to take that that chance you know so i thank god for giving me the wisdom to know but also for me allow for allowing me to see the the grandkids last weekend i'll tell you they wore me out I'm here to tell you, the the one daughter that I stayed with, the the little my grandson, he's at the pops. What's this? Pops, what's this? Pops, what's this? It's Gatorade. Okay, Gatorade. Pops, what's this? It's Gatorade. Pops, what's this? Gatorade. Pops, what's that? It's a window. Pops, what's it? It's a window. Pops, what's outside the window? Trees. Pops, what's in the trees? So we spent all weekend with the what's that. And my son I was like, well, that's what he does. And, you know, typically before when I would go, he would, you know, he'd run around me a little bit and then he'd get rid of his tablet and he was off, you know. I don't know where the tablet was at. I'd rather go buy him another tablet. <laughs> then I called the other daughter and I said, hey, that melatonin, is it? Do I need a prescription for that? She goes, is that bad? I said, yeah, already. I said, I can run to Walmart and I'll give him about six of them things. She goes, Daddy, he only needs one. I said, not this guy. He needs about six. <laughs> but it was a great weekend. And then my granddaughter, her, her cousin, who they're like two months apart, three years old, they're busy. <laughs> really busy. But I had a really, really good time. So I thank you guys for allowing me to uh, take a Sunday off and go up and... Uh, visit with the family it was really really nice so i'm glad to be home though Amen. very glad to be home I, I miss this place you know as i sat in the pulpit on sunday uh there i didn't have to preach but every time i go up uh pastor david i, I tried to hide in the back i tried that usually i go into his office and we talk and he's like oh come on doc you're gonna sit over me okay so i tried to hide in the back and then go downstairs. I said, I'll just sit here incognito, kind of shrug down. And then uh, maybe by the time he gets to preaching, maybe he'll notice me, maybe not. Y'all know how it is when somebody comes to You know who who in, who in your church and who's not. And as soon as he walks past, he's like. <laughs> said, well, that one didn't work. <laughs> but I had contacted him and uh, I didn't have to preach because typically he'll say, uh, you got your sermon ready? And he never responded. So as we we're sitting up there, he says, uh, I'm not having you preach this week uh, because I'm going to be out of town next week. So he said, but if you've been here next week, buddy, you'll be, he said, any other time you come up, if I'm not going to be here, he says, you knew. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I got a chance to have an actual day off. <laughs> 
But it was good. It was good. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord, being with worshipers, being with true believers, being with people that know the word, that don't dilute the word, don't distort the word. You know, because so many people nowadays are distorting the word of God to suit their own agendas. And we have to be very careful about that because people will want to lead you one way. And so they will feed you with incorrect information Amen. to persuade you to go that way to follow them. So as true Christians, we have to be willing to not only know the word, but study the word and then check what somebody's telling us about the word. Because if you look at the Jim Jones effect, so many people knew the word, but when you are allowed to twist it and, 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 and they tell you, I don't want you checking behind me, now you got a problem. Now you have a problem. And so, as, as we speak more later on, I, we'll talk about that, but it was just good being around church folk who preach the gospel, preach the word, preach the word from the word, and didn't divert from the word. And that's what's good when you're being fed with true food. Amen? Amen. Our responsive reading today is 578, spiritual warfare. Because right now, church, we are in a spiritual warfare. When Satan's trying to capture our attention, throwing all kind of sling, all kind of arrows, and things our way to try to mess us up. I, I was watching, I think it was yeah, yesterday, I, quite often I look through YouTube and I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, but I've happened to run across the movie once again, it's called Left Behind. I don't know if anybody's ever read the book or watched the movie, but when I first went into the military, I was telling uh, the first lady, and she's like, what is this movie? And she goes, oh, that's Left Behind. I says, this movie was the first movie I watched when I got to my technical training space. And it was all, I can't remember if it was mandatory or not. I remember we going in watching this movie. I think it was almost mandatory and watching it. And it made such a profound, um, um, not experience, uh, um, impact on me that, it, it caused me to want to know more and more because the, the first movie kind of leaves you hanging at the end. And I was like, wow. There's three of them. Yes, there is. Yeah, there's three of them. And there's about, oh, that's more than 10 books. Because I read the whole series when, when I got incarcerated and I found, I was sitting around in the library and I found the book and I was like, oh, left behind. And then I seen all these series, and so I was captivated just reading each one after each one because they followed the movies, but then they went so much farther and so deep. And uh, so Saturday I was watching it and thinking about the movie and also what I'm preaching about today and just reiterating how Satan is out there trying to get us. And in today's society and the things that's going on in the world, how we're being fed so much stuff that, oh boy... But I enjoy watching the movie again, and I've got, I'm, I'm going to end up watching the other two probably today and throughout the week because it's a fascinating series. And even though they say it's fictional, we who are believers know that it's based, it's based on the truth. So if you get a chance, all you folk out there is called Left Behind. And you may want to, and it's free on, on YouTube. So, and as a matter of fact, it was commercial free. A lot of times those YouTube movies, you have to keep going through the commercials, but this one went all the way through. Um, uh, scripture 578, mm -hmm. Spiritual Warfare, as I'm talking and opened the book and then closed it. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole and you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 
that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about the, with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy altogether, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen and amen again. Our morning prayer will be, excuse me, done by Deacon Willie. Amen. How are you today? <laughs> Fantastic. You want to pick one out for us? Yield not to temptation. Yield not to temptation. What page is that on, brother? Uh, 188. 188. All right. Who wants to start that song off? Because y'all know y'all don't want me to start it off. Yield <laughs> 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 For yielding is sin, <coughs> reach victory now of you, Father to win, fight manfully onward, dark passions subdued, look ever to Jesus, he'll carry Savior to help you, comfort, strength, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. To do him that or mind, God give it the crown. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Appreciate that. <clears throat> he will always carry you through. Always. He won't leave you. I tell you, man will leave you, but God won't leave you. Amen. Sometimes you have to. It seems like you're walking alone, but you're not walking alone. You're being carried. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our announcements for today: Church cleaning Saturdays at 1 p.m. Uh, Sister Merrill, I didn't get a chance to talk to you yet, but I talked to the deacons uh, yesterday. This Saturday coming up, the guy from Window World is coming out to remeasure the windows. I want to get a good measurement. Yeah, right. He's going to give us a estimate on replacing. I'm going to, he's going to look at. I'm going to have him look at all of the windows in the dining room, but in specifically giving us an estimate on getting the first two done, the, the large ones, which are the real issue that I'm mainly worried about, most concerned about. And then um, we'll weigh that against what um, Doug may charge to put them in. But if Window World puts them in, I, well, we get a lifetime guarantee. And from what I understand from uh, uh, the guy that recommended, even if a window gets broken or something, they come out and replace it for free. So we'll, we'll get estimates on that, on those two windows, and next, next Saturday they'll be out. So we'll get those and uh, let's see. And church cleaning is at one o'clock on Saturdays. I think I mentioned that. Our September birthdays and anniversaries. Let's see. There's a young lady. Uh, her birthday is on the 29th. Uh, Marilyn Rice. She'll be sweet 16. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> And then we got a guy, he's been around since time, uh, Deacon Willie Rice, September 15th. And then on September 19th is the pastor and the first ladies. How many years have we been married? Nine, ten, eight, seven? How many? Nine, ten out of 25. No, no, it's not 25. Wait a minute. Yeah, I feel like we got married in 15. So, nine years. Nine years. And she ain't killed me yet. Yeah. But y'all pray for me because I'm scared to go home today because I left the windows open. So, I'm going to tell y'all this quick story. <laughs> So my wife likes to sleep with the air conditioner on because, you know, y'all get at a certain age, y'all don't know if y'all hot or cold, so. And the ceiling fan. So she turned on the air conditioner and the ceiling fan, and I just climb under the covers, and I don't say nothing because nothing to say. So last night they were saying, well, it's going to be a nice chilly night, and so you don't have to turn on the air conditioners, and you can open the window and get some fresh air, and it'll be cool and breezy, and you'll sleep wonderful. Now I said, hey, that's not the plan. Open up the windows. It'll be nice in there. She'll be happy. So I open up the windows. And this morning she woke up. She said, it's cold. I was like, okay. So I go to I go to close the windows. She said, what are you doing? Don't touch the blind. I'm like, I'm going to close the windows. The windows ain't open. I said, the windows open. The windows are not open. I, I opened the windows and I went to close the windows. <laughs> And you told me don't close, the, don't touch the windows, don't touch the shades, because you thought I was going to open up the blinds. What? You have to be cognizant. So, with her being half asleep, she says, which she probably was, then a little bit later on, I went in the bedroom, she said, it's cold. I said, well, the windows are open. She said, the windows aren't open. I said, the windows are open. She said, they're not open. I said, I opened them last night, but she was three quarters away asleep. So I left out, getting ready to come to church, give her a kiss goodbye, she's still laying under the covers, teeth shaking, sound like a crap game going, you know, she said, it's cold, I said, the windows open, she said, the windows aren't open, I said, the windows are open, I said, okay, when you get up, you're going to find out, so I get a phone call, 
Why did you open the windows? This is what I told you that the windows were open. So y'all pray I don't have to sleep on the couch or on the porch. <laughs> But I was just trying to cool it off for you. <laughs> it wasn't, but it was cool, wasn't it? No, it was freezing. It was freezing. My wife would make that. She opened the window right above the bed. It felt good to me. It felt good, but I said, man, I got to get over this trouble tonight. I felt I didn't think I felt I felt like I was camping again. <laughs> and then I even offered, because I knew I was going to open the windows, to warm up her brand new hot water bottle I bought for her, to warm her fixes. And she's like, I don't need no hot water bottle. <laughs> so those are not <laughs> you know if you can't smile see there's no fanny you be turning the air <laughs> uh, I know <laughs> Uh, laugh a little bit, smile a little bit. Amen. 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 Just good to be alive. Our sick prayer for the day, which is a more serious matter. And I encourage everybody out there, if you're watching and you can't get here and you'd like for me to pray for you, inbox me, text me, whatever you got to do. Get your sick prayers into me or your request. I'll put you on the bulletins. So that we can continue to remember who you are as we pray through the week, as we look on the, on the on the page, because we want to pray for everybody. Because at one time somebody prayed for us. Amen. So it, it's no uh, mystery. We we want you to submit your prayers to us Amen. because we like to pray for you. I, I would like one day to put a prayer box outside the church so the people of the community, if they come along and they will have a big thing, says prayer box. They can write down their prayers, and we'll have a little piece, have little pieces of paper and pencil, and they can put them in the slot. And when we come in, we can read their names off and pray for them also, because prayer is essential. And right now, in today's society, in this world, we need prayer bad. Amen. We need prayer very bad. Yes. Oh, one other thing I forgot before we get to the uh, sick prayer with our announcements: we are, uh, we have reinitiated our um, building fund. So we encourage everyone to help us with our building fund. We just got somebody's talking about the windows that we're trying to work with now. We have the floors in. Mail your checks, money orders to Ebenezer Baptist Church, 137 Indora Street, Buena Vista. Buena Vista. PA 15018. That's Ebenezer Baptist Church, 137 Indora Street, Buena Vista, PA 15018. Buena Vista. Yeah. Yeah. All right, on our sick list, let us remember, as I call out their names, remember them in your heart. Carolyn Williams, Ashley Rice, Aaliyah Rice. Judy Gordon, Mary Bowman, Ronetta Tyler, Gloria Wilson, Davia Richardson, Karen Argus, Patricia McLean, Gladys Allen, Sharon Wade, Rose Hillen, Joyce Bradshaw, Gladys Ramsey, Keisha Israel, Butch McLean, Larry Coles, Leon Austin, Dion Austin, Rodney Bradshaw, George Stevens, Travis Groves, Curtis Hunt, and David Richardson. 
Amen. And always Amen. keep your pastor in prayer also. Amen. Amen. Um, As the church and the church of my cousin, uh, Craft Lane, and her husband, she was told that he has less than a month to live. Kathleen, what's her last name? Warner. And Kathleen Warner. Amen. Amen. Um, are you sick prayer? You're sick prayer this morning, right? Yeah, he was opening prayer. You're sick prayer. Come up for the sick prayer, please, uh, Deacon uh, Ray. Morning, church. Morning. Father God, we ask that you just bless every, not bless, bless them and heal them. Yes. Every name was called. Heal the body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Work all from the from, from their hearts to their legs, wherever they uh, hurt that, and touch the bodies, Father God. This I ask. Touch, touch my, my children, touch my wife, touch the pastor, touch uh, the first lady. And, 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 and uh, who was that guy's name you called that? Austin is on? Captain Warner. Captain Warner, Father her body. If you please, sir. And I ask that you continue to bless them. Just from the full of the day. Bless every day. Heal their bodies, Father God. This I ask. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. We appreciate that so much. Welcome all our visitors, all of the visitors who may be visiting with us online. Just wave. We'll feel it through our, our hearts. Um, we welcome you here at Ebenezer. Preferably one day you can make it here in person. We don't have any in-house visitors today, but that's just that that that's what that day is going to come amen yes, uh, reading of our uh scripture reading by sister marilyn rice of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Yes, Lord. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Yeah. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands, yeah. lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. Yes. Excuse me. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Mm. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. amen. Thank, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much. It's offering time. Amen. It's time for us to give back. Also, if anyone uh, wants to put anything into our building fund jar over there, it sits patiently waiting on us to drop something, to feed it, amen? It's hard to feed it. As I've stated before, uh, <laughs> we've uh, started back with our building fund. And if you'd like to be a part of our building fund, you can mail your checks, money orders, or um, I've got to give out my cash app thing. I forgot how it's listed. To send money to uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church, 137 Indora Street, yes. Buena Vista. I say it right? Buena Vista. Yeah. Buena Vista, PA 15018. Amen. 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 Our scripture today, we have two scriptures, both of them coming out of the book of Luke. Are we reading the King James Version? Luke, the fourth chapter, verse three, and then we'll jump to Luke, fourth chapter, same chapter, verse six. Luke four and three, and then Luke four and six. Amen. Amen. I've taken the liberty, as always, to print them onto the program. So you have to follow, follow wrong there. Luke 4 and 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Luke 4, 6. And the devil said unto him, again, all this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomever I will give it. <laughs> May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. After this song, the next voice you hear will be that of the pastor. Amen. 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 Amen.
starting tomorrow, the rehearsal for the YWBA Mass Choir. The singers start at 7. Singers need to be there by 7. You get there a little bit early because they like to start on time. Where's it going to be at? At the YWBA. Oh, that's way out there. Yeah. Now, I know Ray says he won't be able to make it tomorrow. He's got an eye appointment. I'll let uh, Sister um, Tracy know. Um, Brother Larry, do you know how to get there? No, I'll get the address of my GPS. Okay. Okay, I'll get you the address. But, yeah, rehearsal, and I think it's from now on now on out, it, it's usually on Mondays, every, every Monday. Um, the musicians, we started earlier. We, we started a couple months earlier, so we can try to learn our part so that when you guys come in, we pretty much almost kind of know what we're doing. <clears throat> but miraculously, it all works out. But I always say at the beginning, it sounds like, anybody ever watched that movie Sister Act? Mm -hmm. That's what it kind of sounds like, those first couple rehearsals. You're scratching your head thinking, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> but then the night of the performance, and the concert is always just, wow, we come a long way, baby. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the only announcement that I forgot to make. Amen? Amen? So we'll keep that in mind. Our scripture, once again, says, Then the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, he says, Command this stone that it be made bread. The, Satan's trying to tell Jesus mm -hmm. what to do. As if Jesus don't already know what to do. Satan wants to try to throw his little two cents in. And then in verse 6 it says this, And the devil said unto him, to him, All this power I will give thee. Now, how are you going to give somebody something you already got? All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that it is, for that it is, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomever I will give it. Say you ain't got the power to give nobody nothing except trouble. Yeah. But here you go. Promises. Misinformation. The title of today's message is Misinformation. Because all too often we're giving misinformation about everything, especially now. Misinformation all the time. People telling us they can do stuff, they're going to do stuff, and, and where are they? Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning. Once again, it's good to be home. Yes. Good to be back where I belong. I'll be so happy when this election will be over. Amen. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> now, now, church, I, I'm not making any references as who you need to vote for, and I'm certainly not trying to bring politics into the church house, but what I'm saying is it's extremely important that you exercise your right to vote. And in saying that, I also want to say, be smart and think of your future when you pull the lever. Because people are telling us so many things these days. And as I said, I was watching the movie Left Behind, thinking how people were persuaded that something really grand and wonderful was about to happen when all the time Satan had a plan to snatch everybody away. And they tell you Satan's going to come as a great orator. He's going to come with smooth words, but we know that the one with the words that's not smooth has convinced so many people that his words are smooth. But we have to be careful. Has anyone been paying attention to the amount of misinformation, lies, and so-called alternative facts that are being spewed to the people these days? Amen. They're telling us anything to try to catch our ear. Yes. Anything that they think we might want to hear. They bend the truth. They twist the truth. Yeah. Some folks even have the nerve to want to dress it up calling it alternative truth yeah. or alternative facts, yes. but in a different form. But I want to call it what it really is. It's lies. Yeah. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. It's lies. Yes. Like they lie on our Savior. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, church, just call it what it is, lies. Yes. It seems that you can't turn on the TV without hearing some kind of a lie. And yet we're all surrounded and somewhat dependent on getting some of our information, lots of our information from the news media, and that includes our TV, newspapers, and radio. And yet, unfortunately yet, it seems that these days they all want to cater to the lies. Yes, Nobody wants to tell the truth. Everybody has an agenda. Amen. 
And they want you to be, depend on them. But I'm telling you, we need to depend on God. Amen. God will open our eyes and show us which way to go if we follow Him. Yes. How could you say that you're a Christian, but you don't believe in helping other people? How can you say that you're a Christian when you want to condemn everything? God says, that's not the way I work. They give us all kind of misinformation and they feed it to us. They go unchecked. They go unchallenged. They go unverified because they seem to not have the tenacity or the courage to call it what it is. You see, they fall and pray to the lies and they believe the lies and sometimes they peddle the lies, sometimes just for the almighty dollar. But you better beware of just the almighty dollar because folks is trying to steal your soul. Satan has figured out a way how to slide into our society to make us forget that there is a God who's out there waiting to save us, to help us. Yeah. He's making folk believe that he's not real. Yeah. And yet he's there waiting on us for us to call out, for us to reach out to him. You see, God has never left. He's never went anywhere, but we've abandoned him. We've listened to the lies, we've listened to the hoodwinking, we've listened to all the things that deter us from God, and we started to believe in that instead of believing in what the Lord says. Thus said the Lord. Amen. Beware of people coming to you with cheap clothing on. Beware of people who tell you, don't fact check me when I'm trying to tell you something. Yeah. Beware of people who say, if I tell you enough time that you'll believe it. Believe in the truth. God has not wavered in his message. Yes. God has not deterred in his message. He's been the same God that he's been all along. Amen. Amen. Yes. But we want to fall for the hoodwink. We want to fall for the lies. We want to fall for the deception because it tickles our ears. Mm -hmm. Because it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy. Sometimes you need to be a little cold. Sometimes you need to be uncomfortable. Sometimes you need to have to sit up and take notes. Yeah. It's sad, church. You would think that folks with any sense of common sense would know the difference, but they don't. In today's scripture, Satan tried to feed Jesus several lies about who he should worship. You know, when he told him to turn these bricks, these rocks into bread, in essence, he said, worship me. See, people would dress it up and twist it so you worship them. Folks was worshiping Jim Jones. He twisted the words until people wanted to worship him. Amen. Forgetting about the word of God, God says, I will be a jealous God, and you shall worship me only. Amen. Now, if I'm telling the last somebody, stop me now. Amen. Yes. Y'all fact check what I'm telling you. See, I don't want to be up here and telling you something to everybody. Oh, yes, preach all yes, and I can tell you all kind of lies. Mm -hmm. I've been down that road before. Where I've been to churches, and when you check them, you go, hey, 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 I'm the pastor. You don't check me. Oh, yes, I do. I want to make sure you ain't lying to me because I ain't trying to be in Jones town. Yes, sir. Satan tried to feed those lies. You see, he knew that Jesus was hungry. After all, Jesus had been out in the wilderness 40 days without eating. You'd be hungry too. <laughs> Funny how when somebody knows that you are in need, how they come around with some mess. Always. Funny how they're so willing to feed you lies just to get you to follow them. Oh, they wait for your weaknesses. They wait for your soft spots. They want to tell you what you want to hear. And quite often we want to hear what they're telling us. And if you tell me what I want to hear, hey, sounds good to me. Let me follow this clown right down the path to the burning flames. Funny how easy it becomes for them to just lie to you. Amen. Or maybe it ain't so funny. You see, church, in the first scripture, Jesus, uh, Satan tells Jesus, just listen to me. Mm -hmm. well, what am I going to listen to you for? You got kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Daddy threw you out. So I'm supposed to listen to you? Here you come showing up on the scene. I'm supposed to listen to you? You're going to tell me to do it. I'm supposed to listen to you? My daddy already gave me instructions, and it wasn't to listen to you. Amen. But here you come with your lies Amen. and your deceptions, yeah. trying to make me feel good. Trying to make me think I can do something. I already know what I can do. 
I'm Jesus. Wasn't you watching when I made the blind man see? Wasn't you watching when they needed wine and I turned water into wine? Wasn't you watching when that lame man got up and walked? Wasn't you watching? I'm Jesus. But what you want to lie to me about? <laughs> what you want to tell me? <laughs> you want to tell me that you can... I already got that, son. Man don't live by bread alone. It's by the very word of God. That's who man lives by. But here you come with your lies. <laughs> Satan tells Jesus, just listen to me. You just throw caution to the wind and blindly listen to what I have to say. Kind of like what we're being exposed to today. You, you know, they're telling us, we, there ain't no God. You don't need to, you ain't got to worry about God. Uh, just listen to me. I, I got the answer. I know everything. I'm the best at this. I'm the best. I, I, I'm almost next to God. Matter of fact, you can say that they do me like they did Jesus. Amen. With the misinformation and the lies, yeah, yeah. they come at us small angles. Yeah. And now it's penetrating all of our sources, trying to blindly mislead us and get us into a situation where we can't get out of it. Because that's, when you get so far, so far invested, sometimes it's hard to crawl out. Yeah. But you know, there is a lifeline. Yeah. There's a lifeline dangling, waiting on you. Mm -hmm. He says, pull out the lifeline. And that lifeline is Jesus, because sometimes when you get so far down in there, ain't no way you can go right up. Because when you land on your back, let me tell you, you can't go no further down. Amen. But Jesus is standing there. He's saying, I know they've been feeding you misinformation. I know that you got tricked. I know that you didn't know the right from wrong. Because, see, you listen to the wrong people. Yeah. And you got to be where I told you, what I tell you a couple weeks ago, be careful who you eat with. Yes, because folks will feed you a line of you know what? Amen. And if it tastes real good, you want some more. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you know that anybody in here fishermen, yeah. you know they got the regular hooks and then they got the trouble hook. Y'all know anybody know what a trouble hook is? Mm -hmm. That trouble hook is that hook that's got three of them that come down. It's the great big hook. Mm -hmm. And when they go in, you, you ain't getting loose, yeah. Mr. Fish. He got you. And so they don't just throw out the regular hook, they throw out the trouble hook on you. So when they hit the snag, so when you're a fisherman, they always tell you, once, you, once the fish bite, you hit him with the snag. That's to sink that hook in him so you don't get it out. You ever notice that hook got that little barb on the bottom so they can't spit. But the trouble hook, when you throw the snag on the trouble hook, he ain't going nowhere. And so that's what they want to do. They want to put us in a situation where they didn't hit us with the trouble hook. And we listen to all that stuff. And the next thing we know, we're flopping around trying to get loose. Trying to, and, 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 and all the time, all we got to do is reach out to God. But and we don't even know that we got to reach out to God because we're so far invested into the lies, into the misinformation, that we are lost. Yeah. We are done for. Yeah. Oh, church, I'm telling you you can't just throw caution to the wind and blindly follow somebody. You better check. I'm telling you, you better check. Kind of like what we're experiencing. You better check. You know how folk want us to follow them. They don't and won't tell us their true intentions, intentions yet they want us to follow them. They beat around the bush and ask them about something, and they tell you about everything else but except what you ask them. To feed you, miss information and by now ex and by now exposing to us what they really want they make false promises to us yes. I'm going to do this well why didn't you do it the first time I'm going to do that but when you had the opportunity why you didn't do that so now all of a sudden you're going to do all these things that you said you were going to do before but now all of a sudden you're going to do them again mm -hmm. giving us misinformation yes, anybody beside myself that's ever been led astray you, you, you see, when I went to Cleveland, I talked to my friend, and we had, you, you know, anybody ever had rough edges with a friend that was a good friend from the past, and, and, and something happens along the line, uh, along the way, something, and your edges start to rub, and, and you're not seeing eye to eye, and all of a sudden you kind of fall out with each other, and, and you're mad, and he's mad, and they're mad, and you're not really sure what you're mad about, but you think you know what you're mad about. But you, and, and so as I talked to him, and I wanted to make amends, we talked about the things that misled us into the situation that we felt that we were having rough edges. And you know forgiveness is a good thing. Yeah, you, you know when Satan gets to a place he wants to mess you up, 
he puts all kind of stuff in your head, amen? amen. And, and sometimes that stuff can mess with you. Oh, yes, sir. It, 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 can, it, can, it can lead you astray. So we talked about how as we were having our rough times, how we had been led astray because we both had troubled lives. And so he thought my trouble was worse than his trouble. And at some point he could talk about how I had fallen, but yet he was neglecting how he had fallen. And I looked at his fallingness and I wanted to point fingers. And so when you get to pointing fingers and everybody blaming everybody else, you get this confusion thing going on. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we were both being led astray by Satan who was telling us that we shouldn't communicate. Mm -hmm. But now my friend is laying in the hospital bed, had a stroke, left leg, left arm, left sides paralyzed. And regardless of all that, I says, I want to go see him. God says, go and visit your friend. That's Curtis, son. That's who's on our prayer list. God says, go and visit Curtis. I know at the last class for you and you guys had some odds, you had some problems, you had some issues. I want you to go visit him. And I want you to talk to him. And I can tell you when I walked in the door and his eyeballs got bigger than this microphone. And he says, my Lord, look who's here to see me. And he was so happy and I was happy. And we both almost cried, but we were men, so we didn't cry. And we were just both so happy to see each other. And we talked about our differences and we talked about how we had been led astray Amen. by some nonsense, yes. not understanding the situations. And it was something, let me tell y'all, when we got to the bottom root of why we were upset with each other, The issue was about this small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it had manifested itself into larger than this building. Yeah. So, so, so has anybody else been led astray beside me? Anyone ever, anybody else ever fall for the woo woo? Yeah. Folk tell us that they can give us many things just trying to get us to follow them and then we find out what they promised mm -hmm. we already owned. Mm -hmm. like, like Satan. Hey, Jesus. Jesus. Follow me. All this can be yours. Bro, bro. That's my daddy's. It's already mine. It. He just let you down here and run loose for a while. Amen. So you can take that. But that's how that's how folk do. Church, misinformation is out there everywhere trying to capture us and lead us away from our Lord and Savior, trying to get us away from who we need to be worshiping, getting us to worship money, getting us to worship cars, getting us to worship children, getting us to worship our houses, getting us to worship everything but the Lord. Amen. I saw a thing the other day, and it so upset me, where well, a lady was bowing down to one of the politicians. I don't even have to say nothing else. She goes, there's my Lord and Savior. I go, misinformation. Yes, sir. Church, misinformation, if misinformation is out there everywhere trying to capture and lead us, promising us a life of joy, promising us a life of prosperity, promising us things that they can't possibly deliver. See, I don't know about you. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what you had to go through. I don't know the struggles that you had to face. I don't know the times that you were on your back. I don't know how many times that you thought that you were lost. I don't know if you ever felt that there was no hope. I don't know if you've ever been so far in the mud that you thought there wasn't enough water to clean you. I don't know what your situation can be, but I know what I've been through. I know what God has led me. I know what God has allowed me to go and to get me to this point. I know how God has allowed me to let my ears itch to hear what I didn't need to hear. I know how God has said, when you are ready. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, I'm not going to force you, but I'm going to allow you to go through, through certain things so that when you are ready, when you want to call my name, I'll be there waiting on you. You see, because everybody else is going to let you down. Everybody else is going to lie to you. Everybody else is going to trick, bamboozle, and fool you. Satan is waiting to kill, steal, and destroy you. But I will be there. 
Like the song says, I'll be there. You ain't got to worry, I'll be there. I'm not going to lie to you, I'll be there. I'm not going to give you misinformation because what I'm telling you is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I am the way, the truth and the life. That's what the Lord said that I am for you. Yes. I love you so much I'm giving you my only begotten son that he can come down there and see what you're going through so that you can see that it's possible for you to have salvation through him. The misinformation that's out there, you need to get rid of it. Stop listening to it. Trust your heart and the Lord. If you trust the Lord, how can you go wrong? Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus says, suffering unto me the little children, but yet they want to lock the little children up. He says, I take everybody in. You see who Jesus had on his side as his disciples? They weren't the perfect people. They were the misfits of society. They were the people that nobody else wanted to be around. And yet Jesus says, follow me. I can make you whole. Yes. I can wash away your sins. Amen, amen. See, it's me. Only me. And yet man wants you to think it's someone else. Amen. Yet man wants to say that your religion is the only religion. Jesus never put down any of the other religions. He says, but here, I give you a new way. Amen. I offer you to follow me so that you can have salvation. Yes. You see, people now, they've got this... Uh, Christian nationalism thing going on. And so if you don't believe in everything that they say, then you ought to be damned forever. Church, that ain't the way it's supposed to go. God has never forced himself on any of us, but he's given us free will. He's been there when we need him. And when we call out his name in earnest and we believe, trust, and we want him, guess what? He shows up for us. He's never said you have to hate this person. You can't give that person a helping hand. You need to deny that person. He says, I'm open to everybody. So why is it that one religion thinks that they are the right ones? God says, I give you free choice. I don't force you to do anything. You see, they want to force and put the Ten Commandments in every school, and, but they don't want to protect our children, our babies. Did anybody see this week that... Yes. Four people are killed. They're more concerned about protecting guns than us. They're trying to take away our rights. They're trying to take away our right to choose. They're trying to take away our right to worship who we want to worship. We worship the one true God, but who is the God that they're worshiping? If you allow these things to happen, God don't work like that. God don't say, I want you to perish and you not to perish. God gives us a free will. He says, but there's going to be evil in the world. Follow me and I can protect you. But these yes. folks don't believe in that. They think that the almighty gun, the almighty dollar is their God. Mm -hmm. And then they disguise it and want to put God in, in yes. second to mm -hmm. him. Oh, y'all better watch out. The misinformation yes. is out there. Mm -hmm. Folks yes. are trying to get you. And Satan has put them up. He's already recruited them. He's paid them off. He's given them the rewards. They're getting their rewards here on earth. Yes. And guess what? They will suffer for it. But I know one thing. If I don't know anything else, I know one thing. There was one God, and he brought me through all of the stuff that I've been through and got me here today. As I stand here, and God is my witness, I trust you, and I believe you, and I worship you, and you only, God. Man, I do not worship. I watch out for man, because man is deceitful. I don't care who it is. I love my wife, but I can't trust her like I trust God. You know, she she's good, she's faithful, but ain't nobody as good and faithful as God. Amen. You know, because she, she can get mad. She don't think it. But as man, we're faulty, and we can turn on you. Even though we say we won't never turn, we can turn on you. But guess who ain't going to turn on you? God ain't going to never turn on you. Amen. Guess who ain't going to never leave you? God ain't going to never leave you. You see, we can do stuff to make man turn his I, I told you all I got fooled, me and my buddy Kirk. Best friends since high school. And then all of a sudden we couldn't stand each other. We saw each other. We wanted to just throw darts and knives and shoot at each other. But that's how Satan misleads us. Yes, sir. And when we follow that lead, there's damnation waiting for us. Yes. I like being in the good graces of God. Amen. I like when God says, you can forgive everyone. Amen. You know, so many people are so short to forgive and so quick to damn folks. I want to be in a position where I forgive her. I don't care if you wrong me. I may not like what you did. I may not agree with what you're doing. But I have to agree with forgiving you because yeah. I was forgiven. When I fell down and when I got back up, God says, you are forgiven. He says, and guess what? You don't know it yet, but next week you're going to fall again. Yeah. See, Satan's out there waiting. He's got his foot 
waiting to trip you. And when you trip and you fall down, God says, I already seen it. I already knew. But you got enough sense to get back up like David and ask for forgiveness. You got enough sense to say, God, I was wrong. Please forgive me. See, folks think you got to be perfect when you come into church. I told you I used to didn't go into church because I didn't want to mess it up. Because I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> I got really hot last night, and I messed up a lot of money, and I had some bad things going on. I'm going to wait till I can kick all that. But when I walked through the door, it was a whole new story. Yeah. See, I didn't look at what the man was looking at. I didn't look at for approval from the people in the church. I said, God, I'm here for you. Yes, I'm here because yes. you can yes. fix me. And this is where I have to come find you. You see, so I come in the church doors and he fixed me. But when I was laying on my back and I couldn't get to the church doors, I called out to him. Because he says, I'm going to come to where you're at. You ain't got to wait till you walk into the church. I'm coming to you wherever you are. And that's why I come to take care of you. So church, I want to say today, trust not man, but trust in God. God will not mislead you. Amen? Amen. The doors of the church are open. If there's anyone that needs special prayer or anything like that, we ask that you come down. If you're out on Facebook, YouTube, or any of those via channels, and you do need special prayer, please submit your prayers to me via messages, iMessage, phone call, text message, uh, message in the comments, however you have to do it. We get you on our prayer list because somebody prayed for us and we want to pray for you. We may not be perfect, but we know prayer works. Amen. And when we pray for others, we don't look for blessings in return. God has already blessed us to be able to pray for you. Amen. If no further uh, actions are needed, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you, uh, dear God, for last night. We, we thank you for all that you've done for us. The times that we were in need and we didn't even know we were in need because we thought we were doing well, but we were slipping into darkness. We thank you. Thank you for your loving arms of protection that were wrapped around us as we walk through the wilderness, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your son who knew us better than we knew ourselves, who knew that we were faulty creatures and was willing to give up his life to shed his blood and have his body broken for us. We thank you. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you have in store to do for us, Heavenly yeah. Father. Continue yeah. blessing us. Watch over all of us who are standing in the need of prayer. Those who were called out on the sickness, we ask that you give them a healing, Heavenly Father. Touch their bodies. Touch their families. Touch the caregivers, Heavenly Father. Touch, those, touch all those who are affected, who are saddened, Heavenly Father, who don't understand why they're going through these things. Only you know, God, but we ask that they can have courage and confidence and trust in you the way that we do. Dear God, bless us as we travel the highways and the byways, going back to our humble abodes. I pray we find them as we left them, Heavenly Father, and we have safe traveling mercies. Touch each and every member in here, Heavenly Father, until we meet again. Let us all be blessed in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 amen.